Um, this is not a test like an examination. Um, it's, it's a test like we're testing a point to see if a, if a point, uh, in, in this case it's going to be a critical point, is going to be a local minimum or local maximum. We've actually talked about the first derivative test already. We're just going to formalize it now in this section. I think I told you it was coming up pretty soon. Um, so the first derivative test says this. Um, and, and this is kind of a, a general form of it. it. It's a little bit more specific about whether it's a maximum or minimum. But for a continuous function at a critical point C, that's x equals C, uh, if the derivative changes signs, if it changes from positive to negative, or if it changes from negative to positive, then that critical point C is going to be a local extreme. It's either going to be a local minimum or a local maximum. Um, so how do we know which one's which? How do we know when it's going to be a minimum? How do we know when it's going to be a maximum? How do we know at this critical point if that critical point is going to be a maximum or a minimum when the function, I'm sorry, when the derivative of the function changes signs? So let's say the derivative here at C is changing from positive to negative. Why would it be a maximum, Tilly? Like it's going up and down. Okay, and, and what, what were the technical terms that we use instead of going up and going down? Increasing, Increasing and decreasing, exactly. So what we have here is a situation where, first of all, C is a critical point. And remember, the critical points are where the derivative is equal to zero, zero or undefined. is undefined. And those are the only points on a derivative where the derivative can change signs. Okay? The only places where the derivative can change signs are where it, it equals zero or where it's undefined. So we know that over this interval to the left of C, the function is increasing. We know on the interval to the right of C, the function is decreasing. Now, I'm drawing them as straight lines here. Do we know that it's a straight line? No. In fact, it's likely here that it's not going to be a straight line. It's going to be some sort of curve. But we know that it's going from increasing to decreasing. So since it's going from increasing to decreasing at this point, then this point is going to be a maximum. Now, why is it important that we say here that it's a continuous function? Exactly. So if we had something that looked like this, here's the function, it's increasing, derivative's positive, and then it's decreasing, uh, say, here, like this. Um, it's increasing to the left of C, it's decreasing to the right of C, but it doesn't have a local maximum at C. So it only works if it's continuous. If the value of the function or the limit of the function coming from the left is equal to the limit coming from the right and is equal to the value of the function itself, then no matter what it looks like here, as long as it's increasing to the left and decreasing to the right, it's going to be a maximum. Does that make sense? So if it changes signs from positive to negative, it's going to be a maximum. This is going to be something that you're going to have to explain on a test. I'm going to ask you, is a point a maximum or a minimum? You're going to have to say it's a maximum in this case, but you also have to explain why. So your explanation would include what? Okay, you could say the function changes from increasing to decreasing, or what else could you say? The derivative changes from positive to negative. Changes from positive to negative. Uh, and if we're going to use the first derivative test, we want to describe what's happening with the first derivative, so that's the way we would want to describe it. We would say that the derivative changes from positive to negative, therefore that point is going to be a maximum. Does that make sense? Okay, if I change this around, I, I think this is going to be fairly obvious, but I'll ask the question anyway. Let's say the derivative changes from negative to positive, then what's going to happen? It's going to change, the function itself is going to change from decreasing to increasing, so that c value then is going to be a minimum. What if we have a critical point and it's positive to, to the left and to the right? Then what's going to happen? Nothing. Nothing. It's not a maximum. It's not a minimum. Um, it, it could look a few different ways. Uh, it could be a critical point because the derivative is undefined, and uh, it could just look like that, where we don't have a derivative at that point. 
Um, it could be a vertical tangent like in the x to the one-third function we saw earlier where we have a vertical tangent here at C. Um, so it's a critical point, but it's still not a maximum or minimum. So those critical points are potential extrema, but not necessarily extrema. Does that make sense? Any questions about the first derivative test? All right, we'll do some examples on that tomorrow.